Welcome back to my channel, everybody. Today we are going to talk about some options you might have in working with your landlord once you are open and trying to get your rent caught up. Um, this is a, a really important conversation to have because we have all been hurting financially or a lot of us have been closed altogether. Um, so I've been working with my lawyer and my insurance broker and um, we are talking about how to make this work as we move forward. So I came up with some ideas. I have a list um, of some ways that you can work with your landlord um, that I have here. And I think the first place to start really is the business interruption insurance. Most of the time, the business interruption insurance is written so that there has to be physical damage for it to kick in. But it might be worth making a claim and seeing if you can get that to go through. Um, if it doesn't go through, at the very least, you can move forward to your landlord and you can say, I tried to make a business interruption insurance claim and it didn't go through, I was denied. Um, and then at least they know that you're trying to find a way to pay them their rent. The reason that landlords usually um, require tenants to have business interruption insurance is that purpose, so that they can get their rent paid even if there's a fire or some other kind of catastrophe. So. Um, that's a good place to start. As far as actually negotiating with your landlord for missed rent, um, I have five different options on here and hopefully one of them will fit your business profile and um, work for you and your landlord. If nothing else, it's a good conversation starter. Um, so the first one is deferment. Some landlords are offering deferment. If they're offering a deferment free and clear for, you know, just saying, hey, you don't have to pay for three months, fantastic. Um, that is awesome. But uh, a lot of them will give you a deferment and then expect at some point that you'll pay it back. Um, if they, they ha there's a couple of options there. They could do that as a prorated amount that's added to your rent um, for the rest of your lease term or they can just say, I want it paid back in a lump sum by this date. Um, and then you guys would agree to that and um, that would be the expectation. Um, the second version of deferment is to tack on a certain number of months to the end of your lease. It would be basically a lease amendment where they say, okay, for six months, you don't have to pay um, your deferred, but that I want that tacked on to the end of your lease term. So you would need to have a commercial broker um, or a lawyer involved to make sure that the lease um, covers everything else exactly the same, but then you just add on six months to what you currently have for your, for your lease. And the third option that I have seen is landlords offering loans to their tenants. Um, this one is a little trickier because um, there's an interest rate involved and then they'll give you a certain payback time period and when those payments will start. Um, the only thing I would say about that is make sure that you know what those terms are and that you can't beat it by just getting a bank loan um, for a lower amount or for um, a longer payback period or something. So don't put yourself in more financial trouble um, in um, accepting a high interest loan or something. Uh, the fourth option is to restructure your lease agreement completely um, and start from scratch. So um, you might be able to, especially if you have a shorter amount of time left on your lease, um, start a whole new lease and say, I want to sign a lease for 10 years from today. I want to have an abatement period like I did if I was a fresh new tenant, um, maybe even tenant improvement allowance, because now you're saying that you want to stay there for an even longer period than what you had originally. Um, and although that can open up, you know, raising your price per square foot or some other stipulations within your lease, it could also lower them depending on um, what the economy looks like and what it looks like in your state and your area. So again, it's a good conversation to have because if they, they may prefer to have um, a longer commitment rather than worrying about the, the next couple of months of rent um, specifically. So that can be a good option. The fifth option is a little bit different and it's called right sizing. Um, this option is say your business you've decided post coronavirus really needs to be restructured you can keep a lot of the assets that you already have and the um, marketing that you already have, but you need to move to a different, a smaller space. Um, and then maybe you can work with your landlord to say, I only need this much square footage. 
you move your business to that square footage, sign a whole new lease there, they may expect that you have to pay some of the rent that you originally were going to pay with your other lease um, at you know some level over the next how many ever years you sign a lease for. So they can work that into the structure of the new lease. But then they have the other space open and they can lease it to somebody new um, and have both spaces rented. So it can still be a good option for them um, depending on what it is that they're, you know, what their particular situation is. Um, I wanted to also address um, some of the terms that are coming up in leases um, and that people think maybe will help them argue that they don't need to pay their rent. One of those is force majeure. Um, I hear this a lot and people commenting online saying that that means they don't have to pay rent. The force majeure clause is usually about a catastrophe or a fire um, and generally it favors the landlord. It is something that says, you know, hey, they don't have to deliver the premises on the date that they expected to because there was a fire. And it may protect the tenant in that same right, um, but most of the time there'll be a very specific line in there that says the tenant is still required to pay rent through this period. So you would have to look at your particular lease with a lawyer um, to make to really see if that's something that would excuse you from paying rent for any certain period of time. The second thing is the impossibility of performance. Um, and that again is about having a business that is closed, um, not of your choice, um, for whatever reason, ours being a government uh, mandate. Um, but again, it's usually geared more towards how you get forgiven for being evicted, um, not so much like you just don't have to pay rent for a little while and then you're gonna keep an ongoing relationship with your um, landlord. So you would definitely want to look at having a lawyer look at that um, to make any kind of an argument because the really the best way forward is to try to find a good relationship with your landlord if you're happy where you are. Um, smart landlords know that it is difficult to replace tenants. Uh, it takes a lot of time. They might not get the same rate that they want or they had with you. Um, and if you have a good payment history, it's just not easier for them to have that either. Um, so most of the time, that's not what they want to do and they're willing to work with you. So if you can find a way to compromise or if this gives you any ideas on how to move forward, then, then that'll be your best bet. Uh, if you guys have already found ways to work with your landlords, I would love to hear about it. Please put it in the comments below. Um, we are constantly trying to figure out how we're going to make it through this time period and keep everybody moving forward and the society moving forward the way that we want. Um, forward this on to your friends if they have leases and they need ideas and they need help. And um, I hope you guys are getting some information out of this that you need. I just want to help all of us get through it. So thanks so much for watching and we'll see you again next time.